This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Direct us, our Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Revelation 4, on the last broadcast, I read concerning the throne. John was caught up and he saw a throne. That's the first thing he saw after he was taken up, that is, caught up. And I described on two broadcasts the Father's house and the throne where it is. Jesus is there today, right now, this very moment. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Now, today, I read in verse 3, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardian stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Now, I could spend the entire broadcast right there, but I won't. We'll move on. But let me say this. Jesus was sitting, he was seated at the right hand of the Father, and to look upon him was like looking at a jasper stone and a sardian stone. And there was a rainbow round the throne. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the sight? Back yonder, when I was in the tent meetings uh, some years ago, of course, I have not preached in the pulpit now for three years plus. Over three years, I have not uh, done, well, revivals or even spoken. I did dedicate one church, and I spoke at a funeral, and, and that's all the speaking in the pulpit that I've done in over three years. But when I was in the tent and churches... I preached a sermon, I call it the most beautiful sight in heaven. And I think that if you will study this thoroughly, I believe you'll agree with me. Now, I see in my mind the Lord Jesus seated at the right hand of God the Father, and God the Father is blazing glory. Now, I don't know any other English word to use except blazing. Of course, white. Uh, you know, when heat becomes hot enough, it's white. Now, I'm saying that there is no white on earth that could describe completely and thoroughly the holiness and the righteousness and the purity of Almighty God. And, of course, Jesus is just as holy and pure as God the Father. But there he is, God the Father on the throne, and Jesus the Son, Shekinah, Glory, shining, blazing glory, and then a red stone, a red stone, and then a rainbow. Now, the rainbow is a sign of mercy. You remember in the days of Noah, God put the rainbow in the sky to assure Noah that there would be no, uh, no there would be floods no more, uh, that the earth would not be destroyed by water anymore. And of course, next time it'll be fire. Now, I say, and you may agree with me, and you may not agree with me, that's your privilege, but I say, this is the most beautiful sight in heaven because this is the place where those who are ready will meet Jesus in peace and in joy and in glory. And of course, at the great white throne judgment, there is no rainbow. John saw the great white throne, but there was no rainbow. No rainbow, if you please. There was no red stone, if you please, but only judgment, the great white throne. And it was so white and so blazing and so powerful that the heaven and everything moved and fled and there was no place for them. And there it is that all the wicked, all the wicked will meet God Almighty and Jesus the judge, the righteous judge, and they'll be judged and rewarded according to their wickedness. So the most beautiful sight in heaven is the throne of mercy and the throne of peace and the throne of grace. And I say the most horrible sight will be, that is, for the wicked, the most horrible sight will be that throne of blazing Shekinah glory where they'll stand to hear God Almighty read their just reward or declare 
to them their eternal destiny. Now, we read in verse 4, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon these, of the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. They were sitting. And they were clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightning and thunder and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning uh, before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, we talked about the seven spirits of God back in the very first broadcast in the series, but we'll talk about it again uh, here as we have it mentioned. I'll talk about it when we get to that verse. Now, I want to read to you First Timothy 6. 15 and 16. I will give you some other references, but I will not read them. Which is, now I'm reading 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 15 and 16. If you have your Bible open, if you'll notice in the preceding verses, we have the Spirit of God speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mention that so that you will not misunderstand and that you will understand of whom the Spirit speaks when I read the following words, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light, in the light which no man can approach, which no man can approach unto whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Light which no man can approach. Light which no man can live in the presence of because of the glory of his countenance. Now, when we get our glorified bodies, we will we will see him, we will approach him, and we will live with him. But now, if a mortal should approach him and should face him, he'd be consumed. We must become immortal. We must, this mortal must put on immortality before we can stand in the presence of the light of the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we see here the throne we see four and twenty seats. Now the word translated seat chair could be translated thrones without any damage to the language whatsoever or the scriptures. So we have the throne and then we have the four and twenty, which is twenty-four seats around the throne. And there are twenty-four elders uh, sitting and they're clothed in white raiment and they had a uh, head on their heads uh, crowns of gold. Now, I have said this so many times, I almost hesitate to say it again, and yet I feel that I must. You should study every word in a verse of Scripture. Not uh, not sentences or phrases, but every word in uh, a verse of Scripture. Now, who are these elders? Who are the elders? Why are they there? What are they there for? And so on. The four and twenty elders sitting upon individual thrones or seats are, without a doubt, that is, when John saw them, of course, they represented and they pointed to the saints of God in the New Testament church, the redeemed, the glorified saints. And, of course, at that time, John saw the four and twenty elders, and they pointed to that glorious day, when all of the church, I'm talking about the true church, I'm not talking about local assemblies, I'm talking about the true church of the living God, all will be caught up and all who died since Pentecost, including the saints at Pentecost, all who died and their spirit has gone to be with Jesus, resting in paradise, and the living will be translated, and this mortal will pour immortality, and will stand in the presence of the one seated upon the throne, and we will be there to be judged and rewarded for our faithful labors and our faithful stewardship. Now, you may be one of the unfortunate Christians who think that it doesn't make any difference how I live. 
after I'm born again. Doesn't make any difference whether I do or don't do after I'm born again. It doesn't make any difference what I give or don't give. I'm saved and I'm going to heaven and that's all that matters. That is not all that matters, my friend. That is not all that matters. Your eternal destiny depends upon the blood of Jesus. If you receive the Lord Jesus by faith, He'll save you. He'll redeem you. He will write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. But I promise you, on the ground of the Word of God, the infallible, unalterable Word, that you will receive in reward exactly what you earn through faithful labors and giving first of yourself and then of your means, whatever God gives you. Let me say this. Let me say this. I know a young businessman in Greenville, South Carolina. Now, I know about this because I got it firsthand from a business partner. A young businessman in Greenville, South Carolina canceled a $1,000 debt that a widow owed him. He wrote canceled, paid. He could have collected every penny of it, but he canceled it because the dear leader, the, the dear lady lost her husband in a tragedy and she was left a widow and she was, of course, uh, not rich or even she was just what we would call an ordinary person. With Her husband was an ordinary man with an ordinary salary. And this businessman could have collected every penny uh, of that debt, but he canceled it. Now, let me say this, beloved. I know that this old world is a wicked place, but there's still some folks in this world that have principle and character and conviction. Now, why did I say that? Now, this young fellow that did this... He didn't do that to get his name in the paper because it wasn't put in the paper. And he didn't do that to get his name on the radio because I'm not going to tell you his name. And you need not write to me. You need not call me because I'm not going to tell you his name. But I can prove what I've just said. I can prove it. I have the proof and I have witnesses to prove that what I've said is a literal fact. And it happened literally. Now I'm saying all that to say this. The young man canceled a thousand dollars and his business partner told me in less than one hour after he did it a man came to him and gave him three one hundred dollar bills for no reason at all they said i want to give you this i want to donate this to you now listen friend that young businessman told his partner he said that's the lord that's the lord doing that now I'm not saying that if you cancel a thousand dollar debt, you'll get three hundred dollars in an hour. I'm not saying that. God is not a Santa Claus. No, sir. I don't preach any such gospel. But I'm telling you this, and I'll stand by it, and I'll preach it, and I've lived by it for 38 years. Uh, God saved me 38 years ago plus. And I've lived by it, and I know not only by means of the Word of God, but I know because of my own personal life. That when you do what your conscience, your God-given inner man, in the spirit, a Christian, this, this man's a believer, of course. He's a Christian, of course. When you follow the, the, the spirit of God in your heart, if God tells you to pay a widow's rent, if God tells you to put oil in her tank, if God tells you to buy groceries for that widow, if God tells you to help a sick man pay his doctor bill, pay his hospital bill, if God tells you to pay off a debt, if you do it, I can promise you in the fear of God, God will not let you down. Now, that young businessman will get his thousand dollars back and he'll get more than a thousand. He may not get it in an hour or 24 hours or 24 days, but I'm telling you, when we do what we feel led to do in our heart, as the Spirit of God leads us, you'll be rewarded not only in heaven, you'll be rewarded down here. Now that's right. God will take care of you down here, and God will pay you well in that day when you stand before Him at the rainbow throne. Hallelujah. 
You can't outgive God. Now, you may not be able to give a thousand, but if you can give one, and that's all you can give. If you can give 50 cents, and that's all you can give. If you can give a quarter, and that's all you can give. If you can give a dime, and that's all you can give. I promise you, God will never let you down. But if you can give a thousand dollars and you give a dime, you need not expect a blessing from God. Because you, you are not giving cheerfully and willingly. Now I'm talking about, I'm talking about stewardship. We are redeemed by the blood. You can't give one thing but your heart, your inner man, yourself, that's all. And God wants you first. And if you do not give God yourself, then all else that you give is in vain. It may help the widow, but it won't help you. It may help the destitute, the sick, but it won't help you. Give yourself first, and then whatever you give or serve, that will be at the judgment seat to greet you with all the interest, all the interest. I'll guarantee you, spiritually speaking, I'm talking about. Now, some disagree. Some Bible scholars disagree and they say this does not represent the church. But I firmly believe that the elders dressed in white linen. Isn't that beautiful? A crown of gold on their head. Glory to God. Beloved, try not get attached to gold and linen down here. Because you're going to have gold and linen throughout eternity. If you're born again, uh, you'll have beautiful white garments and you'll walk on gold. The street in that city is pure gold. So pure that it's transparent. That means you can see through it. Transparent. Think of it. Now, I wish I had, and I mean this sincerely, I wish I had ten more minutes to talk about this. But on the next broadcast, we'll continue but I want you to ask yourself the question now. Am I born again? Am I redeemed? Am I saved? And if you know you're saved, then the second question is, am I doing what I should be doing to get others saved? If you're not, give yourself your hands, your feet, and all that you are, and then give of your means to win souls. Honor thy word, O God, honor the name of Jesus, save the soul that's nearest hell. Bless believers as they serve and give and win souls. Save that soul, Father, that's calling upon your name now. In Jesus' name, amen.